Hello one and all and welcome to Lilac Talk Stubs where every episode I either take on a recent dub announcement or revisit a series I previously reviewed but take on its fairly recently not dubbed. Um, today I'm going to be going back to an announcement that was made a few weeks ago during SakuraCon I believe. Um, at the time I was stuck in paper writing hell so I couldn't make this video any sooner. So now I'm making up for it and doing it now. Um, the series in question is Dagon Rumpa the Animation and is the English dub account, English dub announcement for it. I can talk today, this is what happens when I'm unscripted. What I'm going to be doing, I'm just going to be covering the actual announcement and giving you my opinions on the casting because I actually didn't have a chance to create any predictions for these characters and these voice actors, so that's basically the gist of how this is going to work for today. Um, and I apologize for her hand if I sound a little weird, um, sound kind of off, there might be tissues in and out of the screen sometimes, some sniffles. I am sick at the time of recording this, um, however, unfortunately, I didn't really have any other time to record this, especially if I wanted to get the three videos I wanted to give you guys this week. So, um, I had to record it now or I was never going to be able to. Um, so yeah, I guess that's it. So, uh, let's get started. <laughs> First and foremost is director and scriptwriter for Dagarampa, and honestly, because I did think about this a little bit, because if Dagarampa's um, English dub announcement came a lot longer from when you would normally expect it, because Dagarampa came out um, the same around the same time as um, Red Data Girl and Carnival, so that's 2013. So it's been a little while, and I guess there was some issues trying to get it. Uh, for one video release here in the States, so that's probably why it was delayed. But um, when I saw it, I knew right away it wasn't one of the bigger properties. Um, the show was okay, so for, for the sake of directing, um, I knew it wasn't going to go to like Mike McFarland, who's more in charge of the high-profile stuff, but it also was probably going to get a fairly decent dub. I mean, <laughs> I mean, McFarland is already doing Hyperdimension Neptunia, unfortunately. The director for um, Dagarampa is actually Christopher Bevins, and the scriptwriter is J. Michael Tatum. Now, Bevins we've talked about before um, with Yudakuma, because uh, he's the director for that one right now. Um, he also has directed several other things, including Devil's a Part-Timer, Bagman Golden Chop Squad, Jormungand, uh, some of some of the Hatalias, uh, Carnival, uh, Princess Jellyfish, yes. So he's directed quite a few things. Some, a good amount of them are fairly, fairly decent in terms of profile. I am not worried about um, Bevins taking on uh, Dagon Rampa uh, in terms of directing. Uh, Tatum is going to be an interesting one as scriptwriter here, because um, in case you don't remember as of right now. Um, some of the script he's done, he's done well, the majority of the first season of Attack on Titan, he's done for Dead Man Wonderland, he's done the script for Carnival, he's done some script episodes for Oron. Assassination Classroom is probably the most recent um, script writing credit he has, um, and based on, because um, I've started, but since I've been starting to notice this a bit more, based on um, Assassination Classroom and Attack on Titan specifically, I think it'll be a good mesh of the two. Um, and it'll be interesting to see what he does with it because it's been a little while since I've seen Dagon Rampa and I can't remember part of it. But um, it'll be interesting to see what Tatum does uh, with the script for Dagon Rampa because I feel like it's going to be some of the serious moments like Attack on Titan, but since it is rather humorous a lot of the time, especially with Monokuma, and especially since some there's a certain somebody who's voicing him, it's going to be great. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, because of some of the dialogue that happens in the show, I think some of it will be uh, like Assassination Classroom. So it'll be interesting to see what Tatum does with the script. So the majority of the cast announcement, minus two characters, was in alphabetical order. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, backwards, and I'm probably going to, at the very least, put two people together at the same time, so that way we can get through this a little bit faster. Um, so I'm going to start with Yamada and Togami. Yamada is the um, high, super high school level uh, Kaku. Uh, Togami is the high school level, according to Wikipedia, the super high school level um, or something, or the ultimate effluent progeny, something like that. Basically, Togane, Togane, Togami. Togami is one of the major characters of the show, um, kind of, really. And we see a lot going on with him, and it's his development and his progression is rather interesting. 
Well, Yamada, Yamada is uh, more stereotypical Otaku. Um, so, the people who are voicing these two characters. Yamada is being voiced by Tyson Reinhardt, and Togami is being voiced by Josh Greeley. In terms of Togami as Josh Greeley, I have no issue with. Uh, <laughs> not in the least. Um, because Greatly has voiced similar characters like this before. I think it'll just be rather interesting. Because, um, just as a little reminder, because it's probably been a while, Greeley has voiced Armin from Attack on Titan. Greeley is going to be Yokoshima for, um, uh, Defrag. And it, the clip that I saw from that with him in there, it's rather glo or glorious with him and Ian Sinclair. It's rather interesting. He's also Mal from Devil's a Part-Timer. Uh, he's done Princess Jellyfish. He's done a lot. <laughs> We'll leave it at that. He's, he's done a lot. And, um, Oscar from, uh, Woman Called Fujikomine. Uh, but I think, I don't have a problem with, um, Greeley coming in as, uh, Togami. I feel like it's gonna be a good fit. It's gonna be a little bit different than what I'd seen of him as of late, which is gonna be nice. It's gonna be a good change for him. And I'm very excited to see where this goes, um, because, I mean, even though it is a nice change for him, Nagi from, um, Tokyo Ghoul or Naki, however the hell you pronounce his name, that's a definitely an interesting change for him too. So it'll be fun to see what uh, Greeley comes up with with Togami here. As for Tyson Reinhardt um, as uh, Yamada, um, Reinhardt's still fairly new to me, so I don't know a lot about him. Um, I think the last time I had talked about him was in assisting directing credit maybe? No, I think it was script actually for Attack on Titan with Tatum. But uh, some of the things that he has done, uh, that at least I know of and might be familiar. Um, he's recently in the second season of Kamisama Kiss as Okuni Nushi. Um, he's also in Carnival. He's also going to be in, up in the upcoming Ping Pong, uh, the animation dub. Rolling Girls is another one he's recently done. Steins Gate, that's another one of the major roles he's had uh, in recent years. Since the only thing I've heard him do is Okuni Nushi from uh, Kamisama Kiss. I don't know how I feel about you going into Yamada, and um, I think it's gonna be fine. It'll definitely be something different for me to see uh, Reinhardt do. Uh, and I kind of look forward to seeing what's gonna happen with it. So the next two I'm going to do are Owada and Ogami. So, Awada is the, um, which one is Awada again? I have a picture that I pulled up just in case so I can tell. Awada is the motorcycle gang, um, rebel kind of guy. And Ogami is the really, really buff girl, high school girl, that looks like an adult man. Um, <laughs> and it's weird how that works. For Awada, it's actually Christopher Sabat. I'm not surprised here. Ogami, though, on the other hand, um, Rachel Robinson is taking this character on. For Rachel Robinson, she's actually fairly new um, to me as well as everyone else. Uh, she has been doing quite a good amount of roles lately, though. For example, uh, she has done uh, certain, ma certain Magical Index 2, uh, Housing Ultimate as Zoran Blitz for episodes 5 through 7. Um, Iggy Tosin is one of the bigger ones that she's been doing. Uh, Nobunagan uh, and Rolling Girls is another big one. She doesn't have a lot as of right now, but she's working her way. She's slowly getting there. Um, and since I don't really know her that well, I can't judge Ogami and her, 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 what her portrayal is going to be like right now. But I feel like it'll be an interesting fit. Then we have Sabada Zawada. And um, I think this is going to be classic uh, Sabbath role going on here. Rather manly, rather tough. It's gonna be interesting because um, he has these moments with another character which I will tell you about in a minute and the person who's playing that character. It's gonna be rather interesting um, to see how those two play off of each other with it and um, I feel like this is gonna be a perfect Sabbath role even though he's way too old to play a high school kid. <laughs> I think it's still gonna be fine and it's gonna be a lot of fun and interesting to see that. So the next two um, we have coming in, in the uh, alphabetical order, is Maizuno and Leon. Um, Maizuno is the, um, high school level, um, idol, and Leon is the high school level athlete, I believe? Uh, he's a baseball player. One I'm not surprised with, the other one I, is one I have not heard in a very long time. The one I'm not surprised with is Monica Real is Maizuno. That is one I'm not surprised with. I think it's gonna be perfect. It's gonna be fine. Um... In case you've forgotten, 
uh, in terms of Monica's role. Um, recently, she has been doing um, Assassination Class for Miss Kaide. She's done Black Butler, Case Closed. She's doing Defrag, apparently. That's, in, well, that's one I didn't know about. Devil's a part-timer. She's done Diabolic Lovers. She has done Excel Saga, um, Rods of Fun. Um, what's another recent one? Tokyo Ghoul is a recent one. Rolling Girls is a recent one. Time to Start a Kiss, even though she's reprising her role, is fairly recent. She's been doing quite a bit, um, obviously. She's been around for a while. This one's going to be fine. Uh, considering, uh, technically, it's not exactly spoilers. Considering my Zono does get killed in like the first by the end of the first episode not much value there it's not it's not gonna be bad um monica's probably gonna do really well with it it's gonna be great and i feel like there's no issues with it justin cook is leon i have not seen that name come up in, in a announcement in a very long time actually so i am surprised that he's gonna be coming in here he has a lot more like behind the scenes credits than he does um with voice acting which is weird and interesting to me um, but he's done a lot of Dragon Ball Z. That's the big thing that he's done. Um, he has done uh, Aquarian and Aquarian Evolve. Um, he had a small role in Attack on Titan. He has done... He did uh, Hatsuharu from First Basket, um, which I believe is um, the uh, Zodiac, uh, the bull or cow Zodiac um, sign. So that's an interesting one for me to see. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Loop on the Third Island of Assassins, Kitty Grade, Bellamy from One Piece. That's one I almost forgot. Uh, Shakugan Roshana, Trinity Blood is one, and Yu Hakusho is Yusuke Yodameshi. So he's done a few major ones. He's done quite a few major ones. It's just been a long freaking time since I have seen him pop in on an announcement like this. So I'm very excited to see what he does with Leon. So next we have. Kirigiri and Ishimaru. This is gonna be a fun one. Um, Kirigiri is, she's a girl that for the majority of the series she kind of has amnesia as to who or what she is exactly um, in terms of like her high school level, her super high school level. And uh, Ishimaru is super high school level disciplinarian. Uh, that's what Ishimaru is. And um, what's interesting is that uh, Ishimaru is the character who kind of has bonding moments with um, Oda. So this whoever's voicing this character is gonna have like so many weird manly moments with um, Sabbat. So for Kitty Giddy, um, we have Caitlin Glass coming in as Kitty Giddy. Um, and I feel like that's gonna be perfectly fine. She's gonna knock that out of the park. In terms of some of the things she's done, Attack on Titan, Black Butler, Ornai's Go Host Club is a classic one for her. Full Moon Alchemist is another classic one that she's done. In terms of recent stuff, she has Maria the Virgin Witch, um, which she's Michael and that's an interesting one to see here too. She also has a small role, I believe, in um, Tokyo Ghoul. I believe she is Kimmy. In other words, um, Nishiki, aka Eric Gale's girlfriend. I think that's what she has for um, that. But she's done a lot. Um, so I think this is gonna be uh, a no-brainer. This one's gonna be fine for Caitlin Glass and I have no issues with it. <laughs> As for who is going to be playing um, Ishimaru and is going to be playing off of Sabbath a good amount of the time that he's there, it's Austin Tyndall. And I will say I'm excited to see this happen because I think I mentioned this before, Austin Tyndall has me changing my opinion as of late. Uh, ever since I started, ever since I saw him in Guilty Crown, I hated it, but then, like, recently. Assassin's Creed and Tokyo Ghoul and Maria the Virgin Witch, those are the three that he's had me changing my opinion with. And I've seen some clips of Defrag, and I kind of like where he's taking Kenji. And so, he's definitely turning my opinion around very much, and I'm very much starting to enjoy his work a lot more. So, to see him coming in here as Ishimaru, um, is gonna be very, very interesting. And I'm very excited to see it, and to see him and Sabbath play off of each other with some of those rather manly moments. Like one of the ones I remember specifically is the two of them in this like sauna just sitting there just like manly like <laughs> it's great. I'm so excited to see what comes out of this and I think I think this will be a fun one for Tinder to play with um honestly but we'll see what happens. Hagakure and Fukuwa. Hagakure and Fukuwa if I can get if those are the correct names. Haku Hakakure is um the high school level psychic. Fukuwa is, um, well, 
she is technically two people. She is the super high school level literary girl, and um, she also has a separate personality, genocider, um, and th that half of her is the super high school level serial killer. Hi Kure, it's Christopher Bevins coming in on this one. Not surprising. <laughs> And I think this one's gonna be fine. He's gonna he's gonna do great with it. Um, in case you haven't remembered uh, some of the stuff he's done, even though I've talked about it really recently, um, the most recent thing he's been doing voice acting wise is um, Life Pool for Yuriko Maadashi. Um, but he's also done Aquarian. He's done he's done some Dragon Ball Z. He has done Hitalia as Japan. Carnival as Yogi. He's done quite a few things. He's been around for a while. Uh, so I think this is gonna be a fun one for him to play with. As for our resonant, murderous, um, weird, split personality, bookworm girl, um, Carly Mosier is um, taking this one on. And this is the first time I'm talking about Carly Mosier. So she's actually been around for quite a while as well. And um, I just haven't had the chance to talk about her because she, she's one of the ones who splits her time between Sentai and Funimation as of now. So she has done uh, Baka and Test, she has done Third Magical Index, Dog and Scissors, EF A Tale of Memories and Melodies, the Elfin Lead OVA series. Um, not the original because uh, Sentai licensed and dubbed the OVA in the past few years. Uh, there's also, she's also Rin Tosica for Fate Kaliad, uh, Pris Prisma Ilya. Um, that spin-off one. Um, Girls on Pens are Heaven's Lost Property, Yomangand, uh, Little Busters, Maria Holic, uh, Me Deca Box, Night Raid 1931. She's done quite a bit, um, and so I'm not too familiar with her work. Um, I would have to watch some of these things or find clips in order to understand. Um, it's just that none of the stuff that I see right now is popping out at me that I've seen. I can't 100% say how I feel about um, her and how I think she's going to do with this, but I am looking forward to seeing what she's going to do with it. I have two more pairs to get through before I get to the final um, two characters. I'm going to leave those two separately. Um, the first pair is um, Fujisaki in Inoshima. Uh, Fujisaki is the um, super high school level programmer and Inoshima, I believe, is the super high school level um, model. That's what I want to say she is. Super high school level um, gal uh, is the title she has in the game, apparently. But more of a fashionista and everything like that. And um, unfortunately, she dies earlier on in two in the show. No spoiler there. For Fujisa Fujisaki, the programmer, it's Kara Edwards. Um, she's one I don't really know much about. Kara Edwards is fairly new still. Um, she's doing a lot more recently. Um, and I think this is one of the first times I've seen her come up. She's been around for a good amount of time though, actually, because she's done a lot of uh, Dragon Ball Z as Goten, ironically enough. She's done Certain Magical Index, um, Vento is one that she's done, uh, Heaven's Lost Property, Last Exile Family Silver Wing, Sacred Blacksmith, uh, Shakugan Ushana, Salty Ray. Um, she's done. She's done a good amount of shows. Most of them are more high profile than others. Um, the big one being Dragon Ball Z here. But I'm not too familiar with her. So I can't really say whether or not I'm okay with this or not. I feel I feel like it's gonna be fine, but we'll see what happens there. And as for um, Inoshima is um, Jamie Markey, and I'm not surprised by this at all. I feel like this is a good classic Jamie role, and I think she's gonna do very well with it. Um, Jamie, in case you've forgotten who she, what she has done recently in terms of voice acting, recently um, she's done Lulu for um, Yurikuma. She has done oh lordy lordy lordy, uh, Death Parade is one that she's another one that she's doing rather recently. She's also a small um, E class member for uh, Sasaki Classroom. Uh, she's also done Baka and Test. She has done. Black Cat, Dead Man Wonderland, Edeka 7 AO, Fairy Tale, Laughing in the Clouds is another fairly recent one. Um, KT Stocking with Garter Belts is one of her more well her well known ones. Uh, Soul Eater is another one of her most well known ones. She is uh, done Shiki. She's done a lot uh, at this point, and I think this is going to be one of those cases where it's a classic Jamie role, and I think it's going to work really well for her. Uh, so I have no issues. Um, 
The last pair is Celestia and Asahina. Celestia is the super high school level um, goth, I think. And then Asahina is um, another athlete, um, but is this swimmer of the group. These two I'm actually very surprised with, but I think one of them actually might fit really well. That being Asahina, actually. And um, Felicia Angeal is taking on this one. Felicia Angeal, um, she's still fairly new. I mean, she's doing a lot more recently. Uh, in terms of like broadcast dubs, at least, she's doing Absolute Duo, she's doing Assassination Classroom, she's doing Yodikuma is one she's doing, she's doing Rolling Girls, she's doing World Break. She's doing a good amount of broadcast dubs this season, so that's pretty freaking awesome for her. And um, in terms of older stuff that she's done, she's also doing Defrag as Funabori. Uh, that's new to me. Um, Data Live is another one she's done recently. Devil's a part-timer as, um, as Emmy, the heroine. Hanagi Next, uh, One Piece. Uh, there's quite a few in here. I feel like Felicia is gonna be fine with this. I don't see any issues going into it. She's starting to grow on me a bit. Granted, Satsuki from World Break, from the one or two episodes I saw of the broadcast stuff of that, I hated the ever-loving crap out of it. I am sorry. But that's probably the whole point because Satsuki is a little bit annoying anyway. I am very much interested to see what she does here at Asahina because Asahina, she's kind of useless actually, if I recall from the series. Asahina is kind of useless actually. I'm very, I'm very interested to see what she's going to do with this. And ironically enough, she follows me on Twitter which is pretty freaking awesome and I love it to pieces. So hi, hi Felicia. You're awesome, thank you. <laughs> Just saying. Um, Celestia is gonna be an interesting one as well because Lindsay Seidel is taking Celestia on. Um, Seidel, she's done quite a bit at this point and um, in terms of recent stuff, there's Assassination Classroom and Tokyo Ghoul is two of the bigger recent things. Uh, but she's also done Bento, she's done Blissey, she's done Index, she's done, she's in the frag. She is um, Fairy Tail. She is Level E is the one that she's do that she's done. Um, Okami Summon or Seven Companions. Psychopaths is um, one um, that she's done. There's also Steinsgate as well. That's a big one. I don't think this is gonna be an issue. It's definitely gonna be interesting from what I've seen her do recently, um, which is either play a little boy or. In the case of Tokyo Ghoul, villain, crazy kind of character. So definitely going to be interesting to see her play with this one for many reasons, some of which I'm not going to spoil you on. I'm interested very much to see what Seidel does with Celestia and her character. Okay, so I'm on to the final two. Um, I'm going to leave these two separate though because they do have larger roles in the, um, in the show itself. I'm going to start with uh, Nagi. Nagi is the character that we follow the most. He is basically the main character of the show. He's an interesting character. He's just this normal person stuck in a group of all these super high school level stereotypes. But there's just Nagi in here. We don't exactly know why he's there or who he is for the most part. And it's interesting to see this character come up. Now, the voice actor playing him, this is the only one reprising his role from the video game. Uh, so that's Bryce Pappenbrook. Bryce Pappenbrook is the only one from the video game reprising his role for the anime series. I find this interesting that they managed to get Pappenbrook to come in for this because it's very difficult sometimes to get LA based actors to come and do stuff in Texas. And can, and I think the only um, director at the very least who's more capable of doing that than anyone is um, Mike McFarland. Um, because he's worked in LA. He's done New York dubs, I believe, before. So he has connections. He can bring people in. That's why Hybrid mentioned Neptunia as a thing, and he got the majority of the cast to come back for that one. It's great to see that Bevins was capable of bringing Papenbrook in for Nagi. And I'm very interested to see uh, how he does with this, because I have not, obviously, haven't played the video game. I've only seen the anime series. And considering the things I've seen Papenbrook do recently, specifically Attack on Titan Blood Lad, I'm very interested to see where he goes with Diagon Rampa. Um, not just as a role he's reprising, but a more detailed role, a more thorough one, where he gets to probably say a lot more than he does in the game. So I'm very interested to see how he does with that. I think it's going to be perfectly fine. Um, it's just going to be interesting what happens under a different director. Because um, because really, Happenbrook's performances to me, I guess, really depend on who's directing the show. I loved... Um, 
his performance of Aaron in Attack on Titan because McFarlane was directing him. I don't know who the director is for Blood Lad, but his performance of Staz, since I'm only halfway through still of rewatching it in the dub, I love it to pieces. I don't remember who's directing that one, who directed that one from Viz Media. But what it really comes down to in order for Papenbrook to really give a good performance to the director who's attached to it. And I think Bevins will probably do rather well um, in directing Papenbrook, and I think Papenbrook's gonna take this role rather well, do well with it. He's already done it before. It's just gonna be a bit lot more for him to do, and I think it's gonna be perfectly fine here. The last one coming in is Monokuma, uh, the mascot of the show. <laughs> Uh, this really, really weird bear thing, and this one I'm very excited about um, because it is Greg Ayers coming in as Monokuma, and I think this is a great fit. It's gonna be fun. I can already imagine Greg's um, vocal tone and his um, specific vocal um, quality matching this character really well. Um, Greg Ayers, if you do not remember, because I think we've talked about him a couple times, he has done quite a lot. <laughs> He's done Angel Beats. Black Cat, he has done um, D and Angel, he has done Devil Survivor 2, he has done Evangelion films, he has done Full Metal Panic, Carnival is a big one that he's done recently, Yeoman Gun is another one he's done recently, Log Horizon, there is Nagima, there is uh, Night Raid 1931, there is Nobunaga the Fool, there is Firebrand is another big one he's done fairly recently. He's done a lot. A lot of shows at this point. He's done Owen oh, High School Hill Scope. I forgot about that one. <laughs> I honestly don't see an issue um, with uh, Ayers coming in as Monokuma. I feel like it's gonna be a fun fit for him. It's gonna be one of those fun roles that I haven't seen him play with in a long time. So I'm very excited to see what Greg Ayers comes up with here with uh, Monokuma. Overall, a dub for this um, looks rather solid. It's nice that they managed to at least get Pappenberg to come in to reprise his role, but despite having to replace everyone else, I think it looks rather solid. And I'm very excited to see where this goes. Um, as of right now, there is no release date uh, for the show. However, I can imagine it would be either probably by the end of the year or maybe even early next year. Um, I know this one's been a long one that uh, people have been waiting for because um, I guess they might have hit some snags along the way with trying to get um, home video release rights. And um, this one's a long time coming and I think people are still gonna be patient enough for it. And I think this announcement really was just to still be like, hey, this one, this show still exists. We still have this one. It's gonna come your way, don't worry. So. I'm gonna be interested to see how this goes. I may, I may end up rewatching it. I may not buy it though, because um, Dragon Rumpa really isn't one of those shows that I enjoyed thoroughly. It was okay, um, but nothing outstanding. But I may rewatch it when the dub comes out, just to see how it goes. And I think it'll be a lot of fun. That is the cast announcement for Dragon Rumpa the Animation. Are you excited for this show? Are you gonna buy it when it comes out? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, please like and subscribe if you have not already and check out much more stuff on the blog and everything like that. Um, there will be another dub talk video coming up in the next few weeks because there is a bigger show that I've been looking for an announcement for and I'm going to do something fun and special with that so I hope you look forward to that. Um, until next time, Otaku on my friends.